two years into this pandemic, I wonder if our discourse haven't become rather a basic drunk mumbling. I wonder if we haven't lost the touch of lordship and gentleness of our lord and gentleman. And please hear the capital letters. Two years into pandemic, I feel like every day, the common sense of being put up against a wall and shot in the main square. I feel like everyone's patience, including mine, reached records low. I feel like in a bubble nightmare where even if we say the same words, we do not understand each other. And that we got too tired to make the effort. I remember two years ago, we had a common enemy. And like I said before, many times, we're all breathing the same compassionate breath. But I honestly, right now, feel like somebody began sleep talking or drunk talking. And because some people were too bored of being locked down, they rolled with those talks. And the web of compassion that was keeping things together all around this world just broke and let most of us hanging in a no man's land while people started to take sides and fight against each other all around us. Ever since I can remember, I attended a small community of believers who were doing their best to follow Jesus of Nazareth in spite of the communist oppression and aversion against anything that had to do with any kind of faith. And in spite of the resistance of a secularized and politicized Orthodox church. Out of that oppression came out some of the best music and poetry describing the tension between humanity and divine. One of the things I have learned since my youth was that brothers and sisters stick together, help each other, support each other, pray for each other. It didn't matter that we lived in the same neighborhood or in a village, five kilometers so far. I remember getting uh, on a train with my brother when I was 14 years old and quite casually visiting one brother who lived at, at the other side of the country to spend a few days in his home talking and learning about what inspired him to start painting and about the Jesus he knew. As I grew up, hmm, I was shocked and hurt to discover that brothers would separate and start new communities according to their understanding of theology. In my small hometown, there were no more than four different communities of believers, all calling themselves with the exact same name, all singing the exact same songs, lots of them being related to each other across these divisions. I eventually moved to the city where we live at the moment. And ever since then, I have been serving the same community of believers. That was 25 years ago. All throughout these years, I have survived lack of any leadership skills, awful preaching, bad music, and overworked weekends. Through it all, I came back from down under ever more inspired and motivated to do a good job. I never thought about moving out and looking for another community or simply leaving the church. Never. Until a couple of months ago. And the reason was the reaction of my brothers and sisters to this two years of pandemic, culminating with the new heights of the meaning of polarization so much that there is only one voice and one trend in my community at the moment. We do not care. So much that last month, because carelessness, excuse me, of the leadership, one third of them had to quarantine because they got COVID. So much that the only way to protect myself and my family was to stop attending. I even wrote an open letter to the leadership saying that every time I have attended lately, I felt under great pressure to be fearless and cool 
and stop protecting myself, stop caring about protecting my mom also, who cannot get the vaccine, uh, who spent close to six weeks, weeks in the hospital, almost losing her to this cold, as they call it. I received only two feedbacks from the leadership group of altogether about 20 people, one in private and one public, and both suggesting no change. So on one hand, I have continuous mutilation of the common sense, complete lack of respect for one's opinion other than theirs, utter ignorance of any official law, plenty of ironies, plus examples of people who are changing from exemplary gentlemen into sailors, if you think about their language and aggressivity, and who came from, from refusing to wear a mask all the way to embracing parties who have amongst their precious doctrines the ignorance of Holocaust and suppression of women. All these only over the last two years. And on the other side, to be honest, I only have the remembrance of what Jesus of Nazareth said once. Everyone will know that you are my followers by the fact that you have love for each other. Now, my dear friends, I'm not pointing fingers. I'm just a little bit desperate. That's me in the corner. That's me in the spotlight losing my religion, trying to keep up with you. And I don't know if I can do it. Oh, no, I've said too much. I haven't said enough. I should finish the quote. That is me in the corner, losing my religion. And while that is a good thing, if you think about the fact that Jesus of Nazareth didn't come to bring about a religion, I'm also losing my safe bubble, my community I've been serving for the last 25 years. So will we continue to be prophets of our own bedrooms, mumbling words without any sense and escaping in simplistic mantra choruses, hoping that if they will be repeated by many enough, we will feel less lonely and cursed? Or will we just stop, get around the table, whoever we are and whatever we believe, and serve each other the bread and the wine with care and respect and gentleness? just like the one we call our Lord. And maybe repeat these words together, knowing we are not lonely and cursed. We, angels and mortals, believers and non-believers, look heavenward and speak the word aloud, peace. We look at our world and speak the word aloud, peace. We look at each other, then into ourselves, and we say, without shyness or apology or hesitation, peace, my brother, peace, my sister, peace, my soul.